In this video, you'll learn all the basics of our WPF pivot grid. We'll add it to a project and customize some features. First, add the pivot grid control from the toolbox. Then, right click on it and select Reset All. This sets the pivot grid to fill the entire area. Now let's bind it to data. Click on the Smart Tag and bring up the Item Source Wizard. Select Database as the data source type, then create a new connection and change the data source type to Microsoft SQL Server. I've already created a local connection. Use a local SQL Server and select the Northwind Database. Now go ahead and choose the invoices table. Select the salesperson view and seven columns. Country, product name, category name, order date, quantity, extended price, and salesperson. Click finish and rebuild the solution. Open the wizard again and select the new data source. Then, select Simple Binding to bind the control to a plain collection of data objects. Once you finish the wizard, you'll see that the binding path and the source were added to our pivot grid. Now let's retrieve fields. Click the Smart tag and select Retrieve Fields. Fields for all data source columns are automatically created. Let's go ahead and take a look at this at runtime. The pivot grid displays all fields at the top in the filter area. To populate the pivot grid with data, I'll drag the category name field to the row area, country to the column area, and extended price to the data area. And we have a basic report that shows the total number of orders by country and category of products. The pivot grid calculates data summaries instantly regardless of the operation. To create a new report, just add new fields to the required areas. Let's add the salesperson to the column area, product name to the row area, and quantity field to the data area. And you'll get a more detailed report about the number of orders. You can sort field values in ascending or descending order by clicking the field header. The row area has two fields, category name and product name. These headers represent products that are grouped by category. You can collapse these groups to only see the total values for the categories or expand them when you need details. You can also change the field's order. And you can sort them according to values in a specific row or column. To do this, right-click the header of this column or row and select the fields whose values should be sorted. To reset sorting, click this header again and select Remove All Sorting. To filter field values, click the Filter button in the corresponding field header. Now select some items and click OK. To cancel filtering, check the Show All Items and click OK. End users can also build their own filter criteria using the Pivot Grid pre-filter. Just right click and choose Pre-Filter. Choose a field, a condition, and then enter a value. Let's show only products with the name starting with C. Note that after you apply a pre-filter, the pre-filter panel appears. You can use this panel to temporarily disable the criteria or edit it using the Edit Filter button. To clear the pre-filter, use the Clear Pre-filter button. Next, let's see how to customize the default layout by rearranging fields in the specific areas within Visual Studio. First, drag and drop the category name and product name fields into the row area. Then, put the extended price field into the data area. Finally, put the order date field into the column area. There's no need to display hold dates in the order date field, so go to the properties window and change the fields caption to year and set the group interval property to date year. Let's create one more date field. Change its caption to Quarter, and set the Group Interval property to Date Quarter. Customize the value format,
Now bind the field to the order date column. And now the pivot grid has a nice layout with the fields we predefined in the areas. The column fields values are combined into year and quarter group intervals. Let's make a quantity field calculate the average function against the underlying data instead of the sum. Set the summary type property to average. Change the caption and specify the cell format as F0. Now you'll see that data cells here show average size orders rounded to whole numbers. Go back to Visual Studio and create a new group. Select the pivot grid and click the ellipsis button of the group's property to bring up the collection editor. Here, add a new group and set the group name that's used to the group's ID. Now let's add fields to the group. Here you can use the pivot grid's XAML markup. This defines the entire pivot grid. The fields element defines a collection of fields, and the pivot grid field element defines one of the fields. The group element defines a collection of groups, and the pivot grid group element defines one of the groups. You can change the pivot grid both at design time as well as using the XAML markup. Go to the category name field markup and create a group connection to the category product group. Set a group index that specifies the field order in the group. Then add the product name field. IntelliSense is available to help you easily type the element and attribute names. You can trim the field's caption to make them shorter. Set the product name to product and category name caption to category. Let's run the application again. Look at the field group we just created. The category and product fields are connected. The first field in the group displays the Expand Collapse button. When a field is collapsed, its detail values are not displayed. When a group of fields are dragged, it's moved as one field. Group fields are filtered in a single pop-up with an intuitive tree-like interface. The pivot grid allows you to limit the number of field values according to the sort order using the top end values feature. Select the product name field and set the top value count to 5. Let's run the app and take a look. You can see that the best 5 field values here are displayed. To see the worst 5 field values, just change the sort order. Let's go back to Visual Studio and display the remaining values that we'll combine into a single item called Others. To do this, enable the Top Value Show Others property. And you'll see that the other field value is displayed. Let's go back to the Properties window and take a look at one last property. The Pivot Grid provides an advanced field list used to reorder and hide fields, sort and filter data, and so on. To change a view of the field list and display the advanced one, set the field list style property to Excel 2007. Let's run the app to see the changes. To bring up the field list, use the header area context menu. It allows you to show and hide fields. You have full control over its layout. To hide a field, just drag and drop it into the hidden fields section. You can move fields between area sections of the field list as well. Now, you get a report where countries are grouped by years. You can also reorder fields. And here's a report where years are grouped by countries. To hide a field, you can move it from the pivot grid layout to the hidden fields section as well. To show the field, drop it back into the required area. And that's it. To learn more, check out our documentation at our website. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.